we're back with another crazy video <clears throat> from the the feral one over here encouraging everyone to go feral um i'm still still making my way there so i want to talk about this this whole second amendment thing this uh gun stuff and it, it seems to me that we really are getting close to having this conversation being brought to the foreground for many reasons we see a lot of uh we see a bigger push now for this gun control this gun grabbing i mean it, it it's been bad for a while i mean it's so bad even trump was doing ridiculous gun control things at, at the behest of whoever was pushing for it or forcing him to take take a certain position against certain things and essentially all it really comes down to is more more control more regulation more ways to get in trouble for doing stuff that is protected by the constitution quite frankly um we often you know get into these conversations with people about the constitution and how to interpret certain parts of it and whatnot like it's some kind of really hard thing to do it's not um and it's pretty straightforward <clears throat> but the problem is is the government always seems to find ways around these amendments these bills of rights that were granted to the citizens of this country by the founders and those people that you know wrote the original document um to protect you from a tyrannical government and one of the obvious ones that they've been getting they've been stomping the shit out of is obviously the fourth amendment with this mass surveillance um apparatus that's been installed that edward snowden told you about that we told you about before edward snowden told you about we told you about it when they wrote the patriot act <clears throat> we actually told you that you know hey the patriot act in fact was already written you know it was written by joe biden in 1996 they were just waiting for some catalyzing event so that they could come in and implement this tyranny over time. And with the Patriot Act, they started it making it sound like it was to protect you because they were, you know, there was these enemies that you had to worry about, these terrorists that we had to spy on. And we had to make sure we knew where they were, what they were doing, roll out all this stuff, put a TSA in the airport. And all. all right. So there goes your Fourth Amendment. And then your First Amendment, we've seen the First Amendment just getting blatantly, what do you want to call it, um, just the, the government just wants to do a go-around. So they set up these private companies or they get these private entities to pressure the social media companies and, you know, well, if they're not censoring this, that, and the other, well, then they're bad and they're complicit. Now the ADL's got the... <clears throat> advertisers pulling the plug on all the Twitter ads and you know that's that's your first amendment going straight out the window all right now your second amendment is there just in case your first amendment doesn't work all right if your first amendment starts getting really infringed and your fourth amendment's already gone there's that second amendment and that second amendment doesn't necessarily say you know your right to bear arms shall not be infringed so you know if one and four fail then pull out number two i mean it's <laughs> it's not really like that it's not saying uh you know you have these guns to go threaten the government with and if they t try to take away your other rights the reason that the right to have the arms is so important is because it's kind of like the last roadblock for the government to just do complete and utter total tyranny, which we're, we've experienced a great deal of it already during the COVID protocols and mandates. But 
you know, they, they always stop just short of, like, super tyrannical shit. And even though they mention that they might try it, like, the, when the, the time they said they were going to go door-to-door with soldiers to check people's vaccine status, they didn't say they were going door-to-door to give you a vaccine. And if that was the case, a lot of people would have been locked and loaded at the doorstep. <laughs> <clears throat> So we have a story coming out of New Mexico where the governor, Michelle Luan Grisham, uh, is <clears throat> facing some impeachment calls because she decided that she was going to s- try to suspend your Second Amendment rights for 30 days to flatten the curb, I guess, the curb of the spat of gun violence. Um, now, is gun violence an issue in America? It probably is. There's probably a little bit too many crazy people, and there's a lot of guns, so, you know, crazy people and guns get together every so often. It happens. We see it all the time. There's these shootings all the time. Now, are the guns to blame for the shootings? I personally think that is the silliest argument there ever was. Um, the people that do these shootings are troubled individuals, all right? So there's where you start. Now, you're saying, oh, these troubled individuals, it was too easy for them to get guns. Well, that's, that's kind of a society problem. That's a problem where people do know that these people are crazy and they shouldn't be around guns, but they're still, they still are around guns, I guess. I don't know. Every, every one of these cases has strange connections to the FBI, too. Well, not everyone, but, man, there's a big, big amount of mass shooting cases where the FBI had prior contact to the shooter. So, anyway, look, guys, it doesn't matter what your argument is for or against guns. It's a constitutional amendment, and the people that started this country basically decided that, you know, it was the citizens' rights to to bear arms, to protect themselves from a tyrannical government, to protect yourself from whatever, you know, to have as your own personal way that you have security for you and your family. Um, And I'm not going to go into all the little gun arguments. <clears throat> but I I will tell you how, where I stand on it all, I guess. Um, so, I've always had, a, I've always been into guns since I was a little kid. You know, I grew up kind of in the country, so I had uh, little BB guns and 22s, and then I've always had a, a firearm, of like to have a hunting gun or two, I like to have a handgun, I like to have a shotgun, For I like to have home protection, and I believe in open carry, I see no reason not to, and you know, what, what this governor in uh, New Mexico's action is doing, is it's basically giving, punishing people that aren't criminals, because she... She even admitted in her little speech, or she answered a question, something to the effect where she was like, you know, well, we have all these criminals walking around with guns in their waistlines in Albuquerque on every street corner and all this. Okay, well, your your executive order, if you're talking about criminals walking around with guns because they're in gangs or whatever, whatever she's talking about, I don't even know what she's talking about, but if that's what's happening... Those people aren't going to listen to your stupid little directive, and guess what? Now, there's the the people that don't want to become criminals for walking around with their gun legally, that never committed any crimes, they're law-abiding citizens overall, they are, now they aren't walking around with the protection that maybe they want or need in situations where you claim it's dangerous out there because there's all these people on the corners with guns and, you know, just really bad, really, really backwards logic there. Um, And 
I've, all, I've, you know, gun control and this whole issue that guns are bad and we got to get rid of all these guns is kind of a new thing in my opinion. I mean, they started pushing ideas about militias back in the 90s and then in the 2000s, we've seen the rise of school shootings and that's when the talking points started to emerge about how we can make, regulate guns better or confiscate guns more or just some kind of reduction in guns but you never heard them do anything serious like try to reduce the amount of guns being produced somehow or incentivize that um so this whole it's like everything else with these people so i got some notes still let me see what i haven't got on i mean think about this think about all this this these crazy agendas that the uh the super the super powers that be in the background that control all the governments out there that we know exist because they are right out in the open calling for you know calling to end eating meat calling to you know do all these things for global warming that are tyrannical and insane that won't do a thing for global warming because they're not even addressing the biggest polluters at all if that's what's what they think is going to fix global warming you know, and they want you to comply with all these new things, and they want you to get a vaccine passport app on your phone so they can make sure that you're up to date on all their new experimental vaccines that they keep making and scare you about COVID and all this stuff. But it's not enough. They can't get everybody on board with this agenda, especially in America, where people are fed up with this, uh, you know, oligarchy from the outside, or even the oligarchy here stomping us into the ground and constantly, you know, oppressing us at every step and turn. And they know that they can't get their agenda through as long as America has the freedom to bear arms, the, the individual freedom for people to protect themselves against this kind of tyranny. And it's not like we're saying, oh, the, all these Second Amendment people, we're going to all march to D.C. with our guns and shoot it out with the feds. No, no we, we don't have to. Just the very fact that we got it is enough of a threat back to them that we're not putting up with too much more bullshit. I mean, I hope that's what people out there feel. Um, and, you know, if they're trying to you know, they feel like they don't have to knock on your door and check and see if you got a vaccine because they're going to make it so you have a vaccine passport on your phone and no matter what, it'll happen, right? You'll have to do it or you won't, something will happen and what would that be? Well, that would be that they, you know, want to do this central bank digital currency and I know I talk about that a lot, but it's a big deal. It's the next big thing and it's being rolled out all over the world slowly but surely and when it comes here, you know, they know there's going to be resistance to it. Now, they have non, uh, they have ways to try to do it. I'm sure they're going to try to do it without causing big confrontation. They're just going to make it so you have to do it because you need it and it's going to help you. It's going to make things more convenient. You won't be able to survive without it because dollars are going to be worth nothing. So... You know, that's how they get this agenda through, is they will have to do some kind of taking away our guns. And that's what happened in, you know, the Soviet Union and China and Nazi Germany. They confiscated guns and then they initiated heavy-duty tyranny. And it's basically, once they, once they got the guns, you know, you already see the level of tyranny that they're hammering us with on, on the regular basis here all right i can make a bullet list but you all already know we all live in it you know and the tyranny that happened during the covid bullshit um they loved it they loved that kind of power they loved that kind of churning out you know half the world into a bunch of authoritarian dickheads run around and shame you for not doing these you know ridiculous COVID mandates that are supposedly supposed to do something. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. So another thing that uh, uh, Michelle Luan Grisham, the governor out in New Mexico, another thing she said that really kind of got me 
was she started talking about someone asked asked her about constitutionality and isn't it, isn't it illegal to write an executive order something like that that's gonna like inf that infringes on people's constitutional rights. <clears throat> And then she went on to say that constitutional rights are not absolute. And, you know, she's talking about the Fourth Amendment and, and the First Amendment, like I've talked about, and saying that those aren't absolute. And, you know, I that's the first I've heard of that. I mean, the only, when you stop short on the First Amendment and say it's not absolute, what you're saying is, is that, for some reason, you know, you could say something illegal. Now, the standard that everybody has always gone by is pretty much nothing you say can be illegal except for, like, trying to, you know, tell everybody the, the building's on fire when there's only one exit and everybody tramples each other. You know, there's obvious shit like that, right? But as far as anything else goes, it's already covered by law. So First Amendment, it's still there. But they want you to think that it's limited and that, you know, all the censorship going on on social media is fine. And the fact that you lock up a whistleblower like Julian Assange for blowing the whistle on war crimes, but the war criminals get rewarded and, and uh, promoted and ra rallied on. And, you know, these are, these are things that we see, we know that the First Amendment has been under attack for a long time and that it, it's, it should be absolute, but it's not because of tyrants like Grisham. And that same goes for the Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment should be absolute, just like it says in the Constitution. It's in black and white. It's plain and simple. You and your papers and your elements are protected against unwanted, unwarranted searches and seizures. And that should include those FISA warrants. But according to her, constitutional rights, which are essentially, you know, go, go back to the Magna Carta. These are rights that you expect to have or you're living in a dystopian, you know, situation. So, and one more point on that, and I did hear another uh, YouTube guy mention it. And I credit where credit's due, all right? Here's the deal is the name of the channel. You got to watch him if you don't already. He is nonstop on this uh, police, uh, police tyranny, police misconduct, whatever you want to call it, overstepping their boundaries. And he's also very heavy on Second Amendment issues. So he's a good channel. And, and I was going to make the same point. Well, I was making this video yesterday, and it got, for some reason, it just stopped recording, and I'm some of it got missed, and then I didn't, there's a bunch I still haven't recorded yet, so I'm kind of glad because there was a new update, but, um, but he, the point was basically that <clears throat> she wants you to think that your constitutional rights, they're not absolute, but if she does a govern as a governor if she writes something on a piece of paper then that's absolute i and this is this isn't that what dictatorships are are and i i always think of uh executive orders as something that the government writes for the government to do all right it shouldn't be something that when the government writes an executive when a when a it's usually well it's an executive order so it has to be the executive branch like the governor the president when they write an executive order what it's absolute. We're supposed to, you know, it's not supposed to affect every person in the country. It's not supposed to be, oh, I'm going to make this executive order, and now everybody in the country has to follow it. That's not how, that's how dictatorships work, not how a democratic process with checks and balances, and that that is not democracy. That's a dictatorship. And like I said, there is an update. There was a protest. Um, I want to say it was at the Capitol. I'm kind of fuzzy on the details because all I really did is look at the headline and the byline, which is all you need to know, is that hundreds of people showed up for this protest. And about 60% of them had firearms, open carrying, to defy this ridiculous dictatorial 
edict that, you know, straight up is, it's unconstitutional. It's, it's a crime, in my opinion, for her to even write it and try to say that this is, is law. I mean, sure, she's got impeachment calls on the deck and a protest out front, but what? where is the accountability for somebody that breaks the Constitution like this? Where's the accountability for the FBI breaking the Constitution with the Twitter files? You know, where, where's, or this can go all the way up to Joe Biden, who is demanding people get censored. So get, get for real here on this one. And I'm kind of... It's, it's weird that this happened because just like a week, maybe two weeks ago, I'm like, uh, I think I need to make a video about the Second Amendment because I think people, you know, want to know where I stand on certain issues after slamming the right for years on my Daily Dope Show channel. Well, it was only because the right has had this propensity to be the prohibitionist in the marijuana argument. And, you know, even though a lot of people on the right weren't that. Um, the vast majority were, and the vast majority of legislators over my lifetime have always been, Republicans were harsh prohibitionists, Democrats milk toast, but still prohibitionists. Um, uh, there was something else I wanted to say about this, but it's kind of losing, I'm losing it, didn't have any in my notes. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, think of it how you want. Uh, but I guess I might have not have said this before, <clears throat> but it's, it's definitely a thing where, you know, you have a, you have a problem in the, in the country and the solution that the government proposes is always applied to the people instead of like other ways that you could maybe make things better. And when you're talking about these mass shootings, I have seen way too much evidence of FBI involvement of Manchurian candidate type um, shooters who are mental defectives, loners, people that picked on them in school. They didn't look like they had any chance of getting any attention from the female side of the aisle. Um, it just looks like this stuff is being used. And I mean, you know, you can go back all the way to Columbine and there's, this is all the case like the, all these shooters have had prior contact to the FBI you know and this is the same thing that they did with the uh, with to to ramp up the the desire for people to have um the patriot act enforced by you know they had these uh these so-called terrorists with the underwear bomber and the shoe bomber but they were mental defectives that, that were preyed upon by the feds and then they were used as patsies to do something to boister up, oh, we need better security, we need TSA, we need to clamp it down at the airports, you know. So, in this tyranny shit, it always comes in the, in the, uh, in the guise of um, protecting people. You know, she's saying, oh, we're going to protect everybody by taking all these guns off the street. You're not taking any guns off the street. You're taking guns off the hips of people that might prevent a crime. You're taking guns off of the hips of people that simply will comply because they don't want to be criminals. And meanwhile, the criminals are like, oh, oh cool, you know, all right, well, a lot less of those uh, dudes walking with the pickup trucks with the 2A stickers on the back to worry about, you know, like, and I, I just don't have, I don't have words for how stupid that is. That's absolutely, this is absolutely the most ridiculous overstep of power I've seen since COVID and even during COVID when you had governors like Whitmer and um, that, the one, all the East Coast governors all of them and the California the, the Gavin you know with their tyrannical shit that they're still trying to do still trying to jab kids still trying to make people wear masks this is this is a uh, it's it's never, never surprises me that you're going to keep seeing these, these uh, pushes towards this, this big gun grab that's coming. It's coming. You better mark my words. It is coming. And the way they always do it is they have this guy named Ed Krasenstein on Twitter because he's, you know, he's like the super golden boy shit lib. 
that somehow, um, you know, puts out a tweet and somehow he's got 80,000 likes on the most ridiculous shit ever. So he made a tweet about this too. And of course it's just full of absolute lies and garbage and bullshit and propaganda. And, and But the thing about it is, is when you see him chime in on something, you know there is a federal focus on that that issue because I'm pretty sure his account is only there because the CIA lets it be. And he's... And he's the reason he has hundreds of thousands of followers is because he's got the full force of that bot farm and troll farm army that the DNC and the uh, WEF, Pfizer bots, you got all these different bots that are in play every time something happens. You make a tweet and all of a sudden there's 20 or 30 bots in there, you know, manufacturing consensus for the opposite opinion of what you just put down. That's how they think they're winning all these, you know, arguments and pol in, in political disagreements. Because they shoot this Krasenstein-fueled bot army at anything that, you know, anytime someone comes and tries to speak against the grain of the narrative, they hit you with that. And now they think, oh, look, we got more people talking about our our side of the issue than anything than they do so we won and and people will remember us people will see what we said and they'll think that's what the real thing was <sighs> don't fall for it guys and and this if this it would very much surprise me if this didn't happen somewhere else and living in michigan it wouldn't surprise me if it happened here i mean this governor here has already done more stuff to do damage to the second amendment than any person I've ever seen in this state like what's what was the point of it all right I, I should cut this off because I just kind of want to keep talking but I already got nine minutes or so on the other one so just stay strong stay vigilant and go feral all right